Hi, everyone. We want to thank you so much for taking your time out of your day to come and see our presentation. Oh. <laughs> we especially want to thank Maria and Nisha for all your help and guidance throughout this entire process, and as well as Professor Kuplin, Kate, Michael, and the professors that took the time to give us feedback throughout this entire thing. Uh, just to break things down, to dive into our project, we want to really talk about the teams that put the work into this throughout the entire semester. To start, we have our agency, Hinterland. I serve as the account manager. I work with Lake, who's uh, strategy and analytics, as well as two creative, Marley and Bo Yoon. Uh, moving into Spark Branding, we have Emily, who's the equity manager, Riley, who's activation, you'll see them in the crowd, Emily, who's innovation, Ira, Kate, and Allison serving as Consumer Insights. Today you'll be hearing from myself, Ira, Lake, Bo Yoon, and Emily. So just a little bit more about who we are as a brand agency, or as a branding team and an agency. So we have Spark Branding, who really illuminated what the consumer uh, practices were, how people were acting with their deodorant, and some trends that we saw moving forward. And then Hinterland really took the uh, position of pushing people out of their comfort zone and discovering, or discovering that white space that we see. So together, we create one uni unified team, which has really pushed throughout this entire semester to give you the campaign that you'll be seeing. So just looking at our agenda, we're going to start off with the tasks that we were given by Swab. Dive into the competitive landscape in which you see Swab on the, brand or on the shelves, our target market that we're really going to be focusing on, the market trends that have shaped what we're doing um, and will also shape our innovations going forward, our consumer insights that we've gained through surveys, ethnographies, as well as our um, focus groups, the campaign that we ultimately have, the most exciting part that we're very excited to show you, and our innovations going forward. So the task that we were given. Ultimately, the task that we were given from Swab was to uncover white space for women's deodorant in 2020. So when doing that, there were three major things that we really need to keep in mind. One being that it needs to be a low education product. Two being that we wanted to focus on that target market of women 18 to 35. And three, we really wanted to fit it with the current ex or with the existing Swab brand. So we didn't want to stray too far away from what we see on the shelves now. Now we're going to dive just a little bit into the competitive landscape, give you an idea of what you would see walking into a store. Uh, looking at our ethnography, this is a Walmart shelf. Uh, what we really noticed here was that Swab falls into this sea of blue which hides it from being recognized by the consumer. Uh, it's even harder because Swab is down on the lowest shelf. So taking that into our competitive landscape, we have two axes. So we have the masculine versus feminine, which we think really embodies this idea of clean beauty, which we'll talk about later. Or I mean gender neutrality, which we'll talk about later. Then we dive into expressive versus mild sense, which like I said, dives into clean beauty. Uh, the, express, or the expressive versus mild sense was based on the actual offering of the product, uh, the SKUs that you would see, whether it's a powder versus fresh, that would be a little bit more mild, and expressive would be like the everlasting sunshine that we see on some of our packaging. The masculine and feminine was actually then taken from a survey that we did, just trying to get people's perceptions of the actual packaging itself. As we see, Suave is a little bit more feminine and a little bit more expressive. Uh, this means that we do have some of those more uh, bold scents, and we also have a little bit of a feminine perception. Ideally, we'd like to get away from this blue sea that we saw on the shelves and as well as this blue sea that we see on our perceptual map. We want to fit ourselves right in between the Mitchum and the Lady Speed Stick, or right in between the Lady Mitchum Speed Stick and in the middle. I'm trying to figure it right here in the middle. Uh, so just to move us into more of a middle ground to fit those two trends that we're going to talk about again later on. So who really is Suave? Swab is that value brand. On the shelves, you're going to find it at a price of around $199. It's a follower, so we're not making these big changes first. We're following some of those bolder brands. And then no frills, so we're really trying to keep things basic for our consumer. So based on our ethnography, our focus groups, our surveys, as well as a Myers-Briggs test that we took as the personality of Swab, we came up with some of these words that we really wanted to embody throughout our campaign. So you see words like shy, humble, sometimes reluctant to change, and yet that doesn't change the fact that Suave is still reliable, supportive, and ultimately hardworking for the consumer. So these are things that we wanted to maintain throughout our entire campaign, um, and especially within the product itself. So now I'm going to pass it along to Ira, and she's going to dive a little bit into our target market and the consumer insights that we obtained. All right. 
So now that you know who Suave is as a brand and more about our competitive landscape, I'm going to take you into a deep dive on who our consumer actually is. So Suave targets a woman called the Value Seeking Benefit Maximizer. This is a woman whose income is $99,000 or less. And when she's shopping, she considers all different factors such as fragrance, ingredients, and price. And she's really looking to get the best value for the best price, but she's not willing to compromise on quality. Additionally, this woman is 18 to 35 years old. So currently that is the millennials, but within the next five to 10 years, five to 10 years, millennials are gonna kind of be moving out of this segment and Gen Z is gonna be moving in. So one of our goals with this project and this campaign was to um, be able to target um, people in that Gen Z group without alienating people in the older millennial group. And so now we want you to meet Sarah, who is a prime example of our target consumer. She's a teacher, she's 24 years old, she likes food blogging, hiking, volunteering, she's extroverted, loves hanging out with her friends and family, she's hardworking, and she's competent. And between all of these things, her job, her activities, her social life, she's really busy and she doesn't have time to think about complicated products in her life. And so when we were thinking about our consumer, thinking about Sarah and thinking about Gen Z, we decided to take a look at different market trends that are going on right now to see what can really you know, guide us in this campaign. And so the two trends that we honed in on are gender neutrality and clean beauty. And these are the concepts that guided the perceptual map that Jasmine spoke about earlier. And so just to start with gender neutrality, this is when a brand avoids any type of gender-based distinction, whether it be in their product, marketing, or packaging. This is happening across a wide range of different industries. Um, the example that we have here is Dollar Shave Club. So they are selling razors to both men and women, but as you can see from this advertisement here, they are the exact same razors for men and women. And additionally, we have some um, insights from a focus group that we conducted that preferences for deodorant can actually blur gender lines at times, and we have more information in the appendix about that if you're interested. And then additionally, we have clean beauty. Um, this can mean a lot of different things. There's no strict definition, but it can be you know, natural, non-toxic, organic, cruelty-free. Um, again, happening across a lot of um, different um, products in the personal care space. Uh, the example we have here is Bite Beauty, which is a makeup company that uses uh, food grade ingredients in all of their makeup products. And you can see the clean at Sephora seal on there. This just um, this sh um, means that it came from a section of the Sephora website where they are highlighting all their clean beauty brands. Um, so this kind of shows that this, um, this trend is really starting to become more and more common. And both of these trends are becoming more and more common. And although that's true, um, we do realize that Suave is still a follower brands so we didn't want to go all out on these two trends our challenge was to figure out what characteristics of these two trends that we could take and integrate naturally into the swap brand so we thought we could take um, the you know less frilly less girly idea of gender neutrality and the more, more simple pared down ideas of clean beauty and that's how we landed on the concept of simplicity so simplicity is we think a really great way to take these trends and subtly incorporate them into the suave brand without alienating any of our target consumer and we think that this would be great for the brand because as you can see from this quote here um, consumers are more likely to recommend a brand because it's simple and so with these market trends in mind, we are going to now dive a little bit deeper into who our consumer like Sarah is and um, you know, how we can really fit Swab into her life. So through our focus group research, this is what Sarah's typical morning routine would look like. She wakes up, showers, makes coffee, gets changed, and right before she leaves, she puts on deodorant. So as you can see, she's not thinking a whole lot about her deodorant, and she, she doesn't want to. You know, She just wants to have a product that is reliable, her, reliable and can seamlessly fit into her life. And so um, just to get an even clearer picture of how deodorant fits into our consumer's life, we did a little bit of ethnographic research and um, took a few photos. So I'm just going to take a pause from talking. And as I click through the next few slides, um, just see what you notice um, in the following photos. So as you may have seen, 
Um, Sarah's deodorant is sitting near all different parts of her morning routine. It's near her vitamins, moisturizer, makeup, but what really stood out to us and what's circled in this photo is that her deodorant is sitting next to other fragrance products in her life, such as um, body sprays and perfumes. And this kind of showed us that when it comes to scent in Sarah's life, deodorant is acting as a foundation while she expresses herself with these other products. And, you know, just thinking about it, it makes sense. Deodorant is a pretty inexpensive purchase. It's only a few dollars, sometimes even less than two dollars for a stick. Body sprays can get into the tens of dollars, and then really high-end perfumes um, can get um, over a hundred dollars for a bottle. And so it makes sense that our consumer would um, really want to smell more like um, you know, these perfumes and other, you know, items that she has invested more of her money in rather than her deodorant. And this is supported by some more findings that we have in our focus group. Um, we presented some of our target consumers with existing suave scents. And we know that there's a market um, for existing suave scents that people are familiar with them and they know them and they love them. But on the younger end and the consumers that we spoke to, we found that there was a market for something a little more subtle because, you know, when they were presented with these scents, they said that they were, you know, too strong, too much, a little too potent. And some people, um, there is a market of people who are looking for something a little bit more subtle. So with all these different insights in mind, I'm going to pass it on to Lake, um, and he'll tell you where that all led us. Thank you. So like Ira just said, from our focus groups, we found that uh, our customers felt that Suave's perception was too strong and too much, which is what led us to our first insight. And that, that's that deodorant should be exactly that, a deodorant. And we found that most today are actually a reodorant. So rather than working to control your odor like we would expect our deodorants to do, they just add to it and sort of mask it with an odor of its own. And this is a problem because Sarah's daily journey is already filled with scents. She has her deodorants, her perfumes, shampoos and conditioners, even her detergents, and then you know you always have candles, car fresheners. And this is a problem because these are you know these can be overwhelming and uh, work to complicate and mask a true identity. And that's what led us to our true insight for this campaign, that women do not want to be defined by their deodorant. Women want to define themselves. And through our ethnographic research, through our surveying, through our primary and secondary research, we feel so confident in introducing you our new campaign, Swap Simplicities. So this will be a new line, and these are white packaging, by the way, I know they look a little off on the screen. This will be a new line in addition to the current Swap portfolio, which will introduce three new scents, which is crisp, mist, and unscented and will be an adaptation of two existing Swap portfolio scents, which are powder and fresh. And we hope to tame the two existing scents back a little bit. We got a little bit of um, scents that they were a little bit too strong, and so we want to tame those back to, to match the rest of the portfolio. I have some blown up pictures here to show. So we want to use white packaging. We want to use simple labeling. Uh, we believe in monochromatic colors across uh, each package. And we want to use these um, sort of diagonal white lines that you see um, all of these work as sort of brand trademarks. And so for our launch logistics, we want, like I said, to introduce our five new um, scents. We want to use this in December, a month before the shelf resets. And we want to allow that time for some sales ramp up. And we want to continue to uh, target Walmart and Dollar General. We feel like this is where we can best reach our customers, um, uh, along with the existing small portfolio. And we want to do this through digital and print advertisements. And speaking of digital advertisements, we found through our Mintel research that a combination of Facebook and Instagram was best for targeting uh, daily engagement through millennials. And we want to do this through both in-app advertisements, which will be more of your traditional product-centered advertisements, as well as um, adding to our current Suave Beauty Instagram with our more lifestyle posts, which are aimed at more brand awareness. And so now I'll pass it off to Boo Yoon for some of the campaign ads. Okay, lovely. So let me walk you through some of our campaign ads. I'm really excited to share this with you guys. So this, we're trying to plan, sorry, we're planning to post both of these on through the social media page in the forms of banners as well as promoted ads like Facebook carousel ads or Instagram promoted, promoted ads. If you, as you can see, we have two main things on the page. It's very simple. We're trying to drive home the point of simplicity. We have the very simple copy and the packaging of the new line. We're trying to get attention and make a lasting impression by using moderate incongruity in our copy. And as you can see, we have one word highlighted in white in each and every one of the ads. We're trying to draw your eye to the copy as well as tie it back into the new packaging so we can make a stronger statement saying, we are still suave and this is our new, more simple line. 
Also, speaking of simple, we have a period at the end of each sentence. We have a very strong period. We're trying to use this to drive home the point of simplicity and make a statement that we are simple and we're here for you. And this would be the sample Instagram page. We took the current swap Instagram page and added in some more pictures that would carry out the essence of swap simplicity. We have both product shots as well as lifestyle shots. For lifestyle shots, we want both user-generated content as well as in-house shots because we want to portray that simple, that like um, simple like there for you essence, as well as having a wide range of women because we're not trying to alienate any part of um, any lifestyle or any type of woman. We also have the very simple packaging ads, which are just featuring hands and holding the swap product. <laughs> <laughs> I think that will also drive home the point, connect it back to the whole simple idea of it. We also um, included one text post because we believe that that will also tie in with our ad campaign. So we have that throughout every channel we have. Also, you, have no, you would have noticed that there is something in this feed that's not on the soft page, which is the simplicity story highlight. So who here has heard about an Instagram story or know what it is? Hands? So almost everyone's heard about it, but I'm still going to recap it just because. Um, so an Instagram story highlight is a story post that will stay on the page for 24 hours. And it can make an Instagram story post, a story highlight, and add it to your straw feed there for permanently for more than 24 hours, and we're trying to use that to gain attention as well as, as, well as make it more interactive for the customers. So we're going to use the story feature to, launch, to announce our new launch. We have, we're incorporating the Instagram function of adding a countdown, so people can get excited about the new something soon, something fun. Um, we're also having the product there as well, just to give people an idea of what it's going to look like. We also address that there's going to be those three new scents as well as two toned down, but we're focusing on the new scents because we believe that'll engage the audience more. We also have a last um, story post that will stay on there, which is if you found us in real life, let us know, let us learn two scents on our new scents because we want to make it more interactive. We want to um, get the users engaged and get curious to go on and try and smell it. And with this, I'm going to pass on to Emily for the rest of our campaign. So in addition to our dig digital channels, we also want to heavily utilize print and in-store advertising. So th these are just a few of the outlets that we plan to use to really push our messaging and advertisements through. This is an example of a shelf talker that we created. So it says simplify your scent. Um, and the point here was to use that action word to really get the customer thinking about how they can simplify their scent. Um, and we hope that the consumer's eye would be drawn down to by the blue um, to the bottom of the shelf where swap sits. These are two example coupons that you could see in our top two retailers, Dollar General and Walmart. And then I'll talk a little bit about how we plan to bring awareness to this new line. So I don't know if you've heard of Influencer, but Unilever currently uses this to test their new products. So the way that it works is Influencer will send a box to a target consumer um, and they will go through the box and then hopefully give a review on the product in return. Walmart has these things called beauty boxes where you pay $5 to receive a box every season. Um, it's full of new products that are currently in Walmart stores. Um, so for both of these boxes, we really see suave simplicity fitting well into them. As you can see there, um, it's cluttered with a bunch of scents and we really think suave simplicity will be that one simple scent that the consumer can find in their box. There's also haul video influencers, which are becoming more and more popular, and this is where a video influencer will go out on a shopping spree, and then she'll record a video um, showing all the products that she bought, just talking about the different features of each. So we could send a swab deodorant to those video influencers and hope that a consumer would see those videos and then be inspired to purchase the new line. And now I'll go a little bit into our long-term strategy. So this just lays out the target market of Suave over the next five to 10 years. Young Gen Z will be entering the market. Um, they're currently in elementary and middle school and they've lived with technology their whole lives. Older Gen Z will be right in the middle of our target market. They are currently in high school and college and they've adapted to, te to technology over time. And then there's millennials who is our current target market but in five to 10 years they will be exiting. So keeping all this in mind, it's important that we adapt our marketing campaign and really um, continue to meet the needs of this new generation that's moving in, which is Gen Z. 
So by 2020, Gen Z will represent 40% of all consumers. And these are just a few key qualities of Gen Z to keep in mind. So they seek truth in all the advertising that they see. They are very inclusive and accepting of other people's opinions. They appreciate brands that will allow them to express themselves and brands that don't tell them who to be. So they don't want to be stereotyped or labeled as a certain gender, a generation, or any kind of type. They just want to be who they are. They'll pay more for personalization in their products, and they are makers on social media rather than shares, which means that they prefer to create their own content, um, which is where the video haul influencers, influencers comes into play. Lastly, they're very ethical. They seek brands that are ethical um, in their production. This leads me to our two global trends, um, clean and ethical and gender neutral. So while you might have already seen these trends coming into play from other brands, we really think that these are growing more and more over the next five to 10 years. We kind of, they rep, they are represented in our two pillars of simplicity that Ira talked about earlier. And um, another thing to keep in mind is that Suave is a follower brand. So they're not, we don't think the SWAT consumer is quite ready to hop onto these trends yet because it's a little bit out there. So we think in the next five to 10 years, as more and more brands take on ideas of clean and ethical and gender neutral, that the SWAT consumer will be ready to transition to this. So as I mentioned before, Gen Z appreciates ethical products. So here we have Unilever's new line, Love, Beauty, and Planet deodorant. Um, it's a vegan, aluminum-free deodorant, and this is a perfect example, a perfect example of clean and ethical. Um, right now we live in a day and age where smartphone apps give us access to everything. We know what's in the products we're buying, and consumers are much more aware of what they're putting on their bodies. So they want products that are going to be good for them. Another way to implement clean and ethical into Suave's practices is through the infusion of essential oils into the deodorants. Um, aside from providing a really nice scent, essential oils also provide some health benefits, such as like psychological. Um, they can help with stress and anxiety, and also they provide respiratory benefits as well. Um, in my apartment, we have a diffuser that we use, um, and they're just becoming more and more popular. So in this survey, 40% say that they use essential oils as part of their regular weekday routine. And then 29% of those people who don't yet use them say they're interested in trying them. So that means that there is a market out there for people who are interested in trying essential oils. Um, and we think that this could really um, be implemented into Suave. Um, in fact, some men's products, um, and some shaving creams and cologne, they've already infused essential oils into those. Which brings me to the next area of innovation which is gender neutrality. Like I mentioned before, one of the key characteristics of Gen Z is that they are able to express themselves. So they want brands that will meet them where they are, who won't tell them who to be, um, and they don't want to be classified as a certain type. Um, some uh, beauty and makeup industries are already hopping onto this. For example, Target has started to eliminate gender barriers, barriers in their shelving um, in the toy section. There's not as much pink and blue anymore. It's more just all in one, all merged together. Um, and we see deodorants doing the same thing over the next five to 10 years. After analyzing through our focus groups, we talked about the different shapes of the men's and women's deodorants. And we noticed that they are different shapes. So men's are wider and then the women's are a little bit thinner. So. If we were going to become more gender neutral, we would need to find a happy medium between those two. And then like I talked about the beauty boxes, there are some male beauty boxes out there and we also could see suave simplicity fitting right into those. So as I um, conclude, the beauty industry is being changed completely. So the um, brand used to have total control over the consumer, but now the power has gone to the consumer's hands. It's important that we keep that in mind. So I'll pass it on to Jasmine, who will close this up. Just as a quick uh, project overview to see where we started and where we ended, we began with that research, we had our two focus groups, our perception survey, our secondary research, and our mentor calls with our two amazing mentors. We then moved into our decision making with our brainstorms, the consumer insights that the brand team really came up with, and the development of our new product line, Swap Simplicity. And then we finally finished with execution, where we moved into our launch logistics, our channel logistics, um, and eventually our product packaging and creative content, which we really think embodies what Suave Simplicity is. So we just want to take this time to really thank you for all the help that you guys have given us, the guidance, um, and we hope you love the new line as much as we do. Thank you. So open it up for any questions that you may have. Start, okay. <laughs>
Um, awesome job. Really, really good stuff. I think your strategy was very solid. I think thinking through the generational shifts was really important. So great job. Um, around simplicity, I feel like there's a lot of brands that kind of use that term, even like food area. Um, I think just the general insight of things being over processed and all that has led to like simple messaging. Do you guys feel like it's like ownable enough? Did you think through any of the other brands that were doing were using that kind of messaging? Just curious if that came up. I think especially because Swab is such a follower brand, we're not trying to make the statement as being the pioneer of simplicity. Rather, we are just fitting into where the industry is going in the future. Okay. Um, you mentioned social media ads and print ads. Knowing the demographic, I was surprised to hear print. What was your thinking around that? So we feel like we do have a main demographic, but there are so magazine and the print ads, they do have a lot of like contact points with the customer. Mm -hmm. So we're thinking something like People's Magazine, who's that's like very fast consumable, like mm -hmm. to a wider range, so it would they would still be able to do it. Awesome. I mean you're creative that one fits well with print. Mm -hmm. Um so the shift in the actual products themselves to make them, you know, less powerful. I love the strategy behind it, but I'm curious if you guys feel like you're going to alienate any of the people that were really passionate about where the product was, that did like the scent of the product. Have you thought about any of that backlash? I, I think, well, first we wanted to stress that it was a new line. We didn't want to you know, take away uh, yeah. already like a very loyal fan base. Yeah. So I think with the changing of the new sense that you're mm -hmm. referring to, I think that was more of a um, kind of a shift for people who maybe had felt the way that we had found, kind of maybe some of the people that come into the target market you think like, hey, you know, I have my perfume, I have all these exterior scents, I don't really want to just add another on. And I think this line is a great option for them. And I think there's a lot of current swab uh, scents that could fit that. But I think what we found was kind of the overall trend was they were a little much for kind of the stacking of scents that we see today. So we wanted this new line to kind of be an option for those who um, kind of wanted more of a neutral base to start a good day, um, if that makes sense. Yeah. And those who do really love the old powder, the old fresh, still have the original swab line that they can go to at the store. Got mm -hmm. it. Yes. So this will still exist. Okay. I have a couple questions. Um, I great idea. First of all, I think it's um, going a good direction, and um, I love the research that you guys did and the pictures you were looking at. So it's a great idea. I did notice in the pictures, one of the things I noticed first actually was that there was multiple formats and sizes of deodorant yeah. in a lot of the pictures. So I'm wondering how you landed on sticks and the sizing and if you would ever think about like what's your recommendation on expanding into different formats of deodorant. Like did you consider maybe a spray or? Um, I think we, we did a lot of research on the different types, um, the different formats and we found that like this was the most common type to use. We considered on the go, um, but during our focus group, we found that people didn't really see the need for on the go because deodorant is always small as it, already as small as it is, so they didn't feel the need to have something smaller. Um, I think we just wanted to stick with one size for this new line and see how it goes, and then mm -hmm. maybe potentially expand to other formats down the road. That makes sense. Um, I think my other question was. Um, how did you land on the sense for the new variants? Was there any research behind that? Um, I think we kind of just took like general characteristics of, I would say like kind of stereotypical categories you would see. Like we have, um, I don't know if we can go back to them, but we have kind of some, I guess you could relate to kind of the Gatorade flavor kind of sense where you might not know the exact um, you know, the exact recognizable smells you're getting, but, yeah. and we also use some of the kind of subtle monochromatic colors to kind of suggest some of this. So crisp we have is more of a, a very light citrus, um, and then a couple of these are a little harder to explain, I, uh, but uh, something with mist, a little more of like a natural outdoor kind of fresh in the morning kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we wanted to kind of hint at the scent, but then not give you this, you know, very exact full-blown, you know, starch um, kind of contrast to that where it was a like a overwhelming very specific scent. Yeah. Um, and I think the broader kind of the more applicability that you're gonna get and the less kind of people you're gonna get that are very tired of that kind of one scent. Okay. Additionally, 
some of these you could almost say embody older scents but toned down. So like a crisp would almost be like an everlasting sunshine transitioned through a similar col color scheme but with a new name with a milder scent. Mm -hmm. So you'll still see a little bit of a lasting impression from that original line, but transition to have that new name, new look, new feel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so before we settle on the simple, just two things on the format, we, we went through a lot of ideas, and my, our other creative, Marley, she had the idea of having your arms up with trees growing out of the armpits. So we tried to visualize us through that. That was our first round. So the cherry blossoms just coming out of your arms because the smell is too overbearing. So that was one of the ideas we had. And this is the other idea we had where we tried to make it more flatter to fit with everything else. So again, wow. trees. Yeah. Well, I like where you ended up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually was going to say, I think our um, our social media presence, we're trying to go a little bit more of a witty direction. If you've looked at our feed, it's kind of going that way. So I actually like that I really felt like it fit with that tone of voice we're starting to take. Um, that was amazing. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's awesome. <laughs> Um, going off of that, what was your thought process and like what to communicate like in those ads and I was just wondering if the consumer looking at the ad would understand exactly what you're going for. Like do they understand what scent simplified means or like what what you're trying to convey? I <coughs> word play, but I wasn't sure. like what are the main messages you were trying to communicate through those ads? I think we're really tying back to what Lake was saying about how complicated a life can be, um, and then having complicated sense on top of that is something that the consumer just doesn't need. So conveying the packaging itself and then reiterating it with the phrasing of simplicity, um, hopefully to just drive home like what we are. And we think that you know it may not be super clear immediately, but because we're in the realm of this evolving industry where simplicity is something that's very common, you know, these toned down scents, toned down packaging, even the toned down font that you'd see, uh, we think it fit right in there and the consumer would kind of understand just based on the realm they're in. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think one of my other questions was knowing, and you might touch on this a little bit, but knowing that Swap is such a follower, as you mentioned, and we want to see a beauty trend play out a little bit and succeed before going into a new area, mm -hmm. have you, did you do any research into like, other deodorants that are doing similar things and like if they're succeeding? So there's um, other brands that are doing the simil similar minimalistic, like less gender green. There's um, Myro, if you've heard of it, it's more of a high-end deodorant with like more sustainable packaging or just like keep the packaging, just change what's inside. And there's also Native, which is more simple and it seems like they've been doing well for the past well, for, for a while, so we're saying like it's already been played out, so we can yeah. pursue it now. Okay, great. That's great that you looked into that then. Um, and then I think it's one of my last questions. Well, first quick question, what is the price you're proposing for this? Is it blind price or? We were going to remain at, at the, the one, same one ninety nine price. Okay. What's your thought behind that? So, as we said, it's a line extension. Um, we're not trying to necessarily elevate it to become a higher quality product. Mm -hmm. There's no change in the ingredient itself. There's no change in the durability of the packaging. Uh, it's just merely the look and feel of it. Yeah. So, yeah, go ahead. I just will also wanted to say that, like, through our focus group research and stuff, something that consumers already value a lot about Swap is the price point and the value brand. So we just wanted to keep that strong part of the brand. So that's yeah, that's very important. And then I think my last question, which I asked the other team as well, was knowing that our target consumer goes from like up to 35, how do you think we're reaching them with this? Are we ostracizing them at all with this line? Or? So I don't think we'll be alienating any groups because we're not only focusing on digital, but like you mentioned, we'll be also doing print. So they'll be able to be exposed to that through the print ads. And I feel like the age group 35 and up, they're also very um, now what do you call it? Like they're also on like platforms like Facebook. Yeah. They're involved in the visual community still. So I think can reach them both ways. And I don't think having a simpler scent will like make them feel alienated because mm -hmm. it is a trend in the beauty market. And they probably already felt it and noticed it. So they can like feel the trend and like 
not feel alienated or ostracized. I also think that um, so when you go to a Sephora, you see a lot of hip brands that maybe we recognize, but our moms don't. Mm -hmm. But then you look at a brand like CoverGirl, that's a household name, and they've completely done a whole revamp similar to this, where they're going for more of a white, more basic font, and that's resonating just as well as the previous packaging, if not better. Mm -hmm. So I don't think this is something that's going to scare away the older generation by any means. Thank you guys. I'm wondering, I know some of you have classes to go to. Can we take a quick group picture before you guys got around?